Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to this live show. God bless. Hello, how is everybody? I really missed everyone. How is the sound? Let me know, guys. Give me a one if you can hear me loud and clear. Hope the sound is good. Perfect, perfect. Guys, after almost a month, let me by this say, it's showtime. You know, I always say David Wood has his own uh, sentence, so let me have my own. <laughs> nah, just kidding, guys. I hope everyone, everybody's doing uh, okay. Did you guys miss me? I hope you didn't miss me, miss me too much. I mean, come on. How can you miss Rob Christian? Uh, guys, I've been having uh, some personal issues the uh, last couple of weeks, and uh, thanks to the Lord, uh, everything went fine, and everything is all okay again. You know, that's a life. We have to deal with difficulties and whatnot. I really missed all of you. Uh, I didn't forget about uh, this work. Uh, you know, sometimes we have these days, these weeks uh, for our own selves to fix, right? You know what I mean. So, now I'm back. I'm healthy. I'm okay. So, spread the word. I really missed everyone. I hope uh, you guys are still downloading videos of other warriors like Christian Prince, like David Wood, like Sam Shimon, and many others. Please keep doing that guys keep downloading our videos so what are we going to do today guys we will have the opportunity guys today on this live broadcast to understand how the prophet of islam muhammad was copying jews and christians and we will expose islam the quran and this fake prophet of the muhammadans right but before we start, I want to pray with you guys today. Uh, and I also want to say when we finish our teaching today uh, in the Q&A session, uh, we always do a nice Q&A session in the end on our live show after I'm done teaching. We will give the Muslims the opportunity to call us on Skype live. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian without separation. The Arab Christian, that's my Skype ID. Muslims can call me live on Skype and try to refute me or ask me questions about today's topic. So I hope we have some Muslims who have the courage and the knowledge to call us live to see if they can end my career. I mean, I've been away for one month. Maybe now you finally can shut me up, right? Maybe you have the courage and the knowledge to end my career. Right? Like Muhammad Hijab, Mimi Hijab would say, silence me, right? Silence me, Muslims, right? Today you are going to expose your fake prophet, and I'm going to show you that you cannot do anything about it. So before we start, let us pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Pray with me, guys, in, in the name of Jesus. Lord, please forgive our daily sins and guide us to forgive others who might curse us or persecute us because because we are followers of your holy son jesus christ glory to his name please lord give us the courage and wisdom today to overcome lies taqiyya and deceptions and fold us in your arms lord fill us with your holy spirit that we might reflect your light within this dark, sad world. And that we speak your word, your holy word with boldness. Draw others to your feet, Lord. We ask this through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Glory to his name, our Lord and Savior. Please, Lord, give us the courage today and always to do whatever, whatever needs to be done, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray amen amen welcome again guys welcome thank you for praying with me uh if there are muslims you are also welcome today we're going to show you 
that Muhammad again, yet again, that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. Please spread the word, invite your friends. We just started. Invite your friends on social media to come and watch us. And don't forget when we are done teaching, uh, please let YouTube uh, process the video because it takes time. And don't forget to click on 720p for the best quality for the screen. So thank you jo for joining in. Let me start today's teaching. Uh, as you see here, guys, <clears throat> you see in the background there's a Muslim here who is holding a rosary sitting on a carpet. I hope it's not the flying carpet of Solomon. But well, sitting on the carpet, praying to Allah and uh, his prophet. So, Muslims always say, we are not allowed to copy the Jews and the Christians. That's what Islam teaches. Don't copy the Jews and the Christians. There is no need to copy the Jews and the Christians. Right? But wait a second. This rosemary... Or rosary, what, sorry if I'm butchering the English word for it, rosary, I think it's called rosary. Where do the Muslims got it from? From the Christians, of course. Because Christians, it's a, you know, it's a tradition. Christians used to use a rosary for praying. And as you see here, if you count them, they have to be 33. Why 33? Why the number 33? Because Jesus was 33 years old, right? When he died on the cross, he was around 33 years old. So this is why Christians used to have a rosary when they pray. But Muslims, always copying the Jews and the Christians, they copy this and they still are using our tradition, our ways, when they even pray. So how dare you Muslims say that you don't copy the Jews and the Christians, right? But that's not it. This is something very small, guys. I mean, I don't really care. I really like the picture, so I used it in the background. <clears throat> guys, please also don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. And also don't forget to click on the notification bell to get notifications when we go live. So, if we go to islamqna.info which is a very known website and there's a general supervisor or this sheikh who is answering questions of Muslims so his name is Sheikh Muhammad Salih Al-Munajjid Sheikh Muhammad Salih Al-Munajjid guys maybe you're uh, hearing from my voice I'm a little bit uh, I, have, I have a cold so bear with me if my sound is not like it used to be so I'm still kind of sick but you know that does not hold me back to do the Lord's work. And refute this cult called Islam and the fake prophet of Islam to get Muslims back to home to Jesus Christ. If there are Muslims today, please keep attention. So this Sheikh is answering one of the questions of Muslims. He says, the Muslims have no need to imitate any of other nations in matters of religious rituals and acts of worship. Well, we just showed you how Muslims stole this rosary from the Christians. For Allah has perfected his religion and completed his favor and chosen for us Islam as our religion. As he says, interpretation meaning, this day I've perfected your religion and for you, completed my favor upon you and I've chosen for you Islam as your religion. Guys, a question. Is this true? Do Muslims copy Jews and Christians? Yes or no? The answer is, of course, yes, they do. So, and then if you, if you continue, it says, Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, 3, which is the Quran, chapter Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, ayah 3, it says, Islam forbids the Muslims to imitate the Kuffar. So, the Sheikh is uh, basically saying, again, we are not allowed. It, for, it is forbidden to copy the Jews and the Christians, right? And Islam is nothing but a copycat. They stole our prophets. 
they stole our traditions as we showed you they even stole the way of praying when you when you ask muslims how do you muslims pray they say we have to bow down and and, and do raka right uh, where did where do the muslims get this from from the christians they are still christians and many christians are still bowing down when they pray the muslim muhammad didn't invent that this is the christians have been doing that for centuries just google it just go on youtube and see for yourself right so even the way of praying is being stolen from the christians right and let me show you let me show you i found a video on youtube let me show you how they even stole the way for calling for prayers from the jews i found this video guys let me play it for you and let me then comment on it uh this guy is playing a video how the jews are calling for prayer let me play the video I hope the sound is good. So this is the Shema of the Jews, guys. It's really beautiful, right? Wow, wow, beautiful. Now, where did this guy got the Shema from? Of course, directly from the Bible. If we go to Deuteronomy 6, from the King James Version, Deuteronomy 6, verse or hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord so the Shema that you just heard guys the beautiful Shema is directly from the Holy Bible right now let me play <clears throat> let me play the video further and see how Muhammad simply is copying the Jews Adonai. Now here comes the Muslim version, okay? The Muslim call to prayer. So the Jews had a call for prayer, and Muhammad, of course, copying the Jews. So, you see how, how almost similar it is, right? One God, which is false. Muslims don't worship one God. They worship one of. Allahu Ahad. Allah is one of. Many, right? Many gods in Islam. But the Jews and the Christians, they worship only one God. We just played the Shema for you, right? So, you see, it's nothing but a copy-paste. And they dare to say, they dare to say, we don't copy the Jews and the, we are not allowed to copy the Jews and the Christians. So we have this ultimate truth, Mr. 
Ultimate Warrior, still using the shirk name. I mean, the truth, Al Haq, is the name of your Allah, right? One of the 99 names. Why are you calling yourself Allah, Mr. Ultimate Truth? Anyway, you, we, we know you, you Muslims love to do shirk. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Right? Allahu Akbar, guys, does not mean Allah is great or greater. Even the word don't, don't make sense, but it means Allah and Akbar. Allah and Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Why else they should have said Allah Akbar, right? So it, said, it means Allah and Akbar. Now who is Allah? That's the moon idol, right? The pagans of Quraysh, the pagan Quraysh of Mecca, they used to worship Allah. They were pagans. But they, Allah, the moon idol, had a wife, the son, that was Akbar. So this is why they are still using Allahu, Allah and Akbar, the moon idol. So here Muhammad exposed himself. When he copied Allah, right? Because remember, if you go to the Quran, you have Abraham is worshipping Akbar, the son, right? He called Akbar the son Akbar. Remember the ayah from the Quran, guys? And maybe you have seen, maybe I think David Wood or Christian Prince have shown that before, right? Akbar is the son. So Abraham saw the son and he called it Akbar. And Allah is the moon idol. So Allah and the son, they married and they have three daughters. Allah al Uzza wal Manat. Right? If we go to the Quran, let me show you. <clears throat> I have really a sore throat and I'm really having a cold, but you know, it is what it is. If we go to chapter 53, yes, that's the one. Just a second, bear with me, guys. Chapter 53, uh, verses 19. Here. Have you thought upon Allah and Al Uzza and Manat? These are the three daughters of Allah and his wife, the son, Akbar, right? The third, the other. Are yours the males and his the females? That indeed were an unfair decision. So here Allah is saying, Why are you having the males? So the sons, why are you giving me the daughters? Because remember, Manat is a daughter of Allah. Allah is the daughter of Allah. And Al Uzza is the third daughter of Allah, right? So Allah is saying, Allah is saying, why are you giving me the, the, the daughters? Right? And you take the males and you give me daughters? What? Why? I don't want to have daughters. I want to have sons. And that's indeed an unfair division. So Allah is saying, it's unfair to give me the three daughters. Right? This is why he's calling it unfair. Read it. It's in front of you. Right? So Allah and Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah and Akbar, the son, his wife, the son, are having three daughters. So this is why if you go to Surat Al-Ikhlas, let me go to Surat Al-Ikhlas, just a second guys. Surat Al-Ikhlas. What chapter was Surat Al-Ikhlas again? Uh, 112. If you go to chapter 112, guys. If you go to chapter 112, Surat Al-Ikhlas. You can see. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Right? Say Allah is one of. So here, this is a false translation, as you see in front of you. You know, Muslims always, in their translation, need to fix this. It says, say, قُلْ say, say that Allah is one of. One of what? Many gods. Why is Allah not finishing the sentence? Right? Because Allah clearly is saying, He is one of. هُوَ Allah Right? Allah is one of. Allah 
as samad Allahu samad that means Allah is solid not hollow because he is a statue he is an idol and we know idols are made from stone this is why he cannot eat right if you go to the tafsir it says what the meaning of samad is he, you know, even the scholars of, of Islam, they do not agree what Samad means because it's not an Arabic word. Uh, Ahad is not an Arabic word. It comes from Hebrew, right? Samad is Hebrew word. Ahad is Hebrew word. So here, it doesn't say that Allah is one. So they have to always fix it in the translation. Why are you Muslims such deceivers? Why are you such scumbags? That you need to fix the Arabic. Because the Arabic does not say he is one. Because one, guys, here the word Ahad should have been Wahid. Did you catch it? Ahad should have been Wahid. So it should have been said, Qul huwa Allahu Wahid. Allah is one. But here it says Ahad. One of. One of. One of what? Maybe cars. Maybe. Uh, schools maybe a chair Allah is maybe a chair and we don't know Allah can can be you many but if let's assume he's saying he's God right Allahu Ahad one of many gods right because you have Akbar Allah who Akbar Allah and the son his wife and his three daughters why the three daughters guys why did the pagans used to worship Allah as the supreme moon idol Together with his wife, the son, Akbar, and Allah Tal Uzza wal Manat, because the daughters of Allah, Allah Tal Uzza wal Manat, they were bird idols, they had wings. What did they do? They used to carry the prayers of the pagan Quraysh in Mecca before Islam. They carried those prayers all the way to the supreme moon idol, Allah. Right? So that's the true meaning of Tawheed. And even the word Tawheed means unification unification what does unification mean guys what does unification mean let me let me just google it guys unification the process of being united or made into a whole that's what Tawheed means in Arabic, unification. So many idols in Islam, Akbar, Allah, Allah al uzza wal manat, even the Quran that, re, uh, that carries and intercedes for the Muslims on the day of judgment, right? Don't forget that the Quran will become a pale man, right? The Quran will become a pale man. Let me show you. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I really have a bad day, but what, what can we do? <clears throat> so, maybe we should not do this for a very long time, but we'll see how long we are going to do a live broadcasting. So the Quran, this is Sunan Ibn Majah, good hadith, as you see in front of you, right? This is good hadith. The Quran will come on the day of resurrection like a pale man and will say, I am the one that kept you awake at night and made you thirsty during the day. So the Quran will become a pale man. So, you know, Muslims always say, why do you worship Jesus? Why do you think Jesus is God? I mean, he's a, he's a man. Well, your Quran will become a man. Why are you such hypocrite, Muslims? Right? Your Quran will become a man. And you have a problem with Jesus being the eternal word of God. Like John 1.1 1, 1, saying, In the beginning was God and the word was with God. And the word was God and the word became flesh. John 1.14 and dwelt among us. And glory to that word. Right? So why you Muslims are such hypocrites? But anyway, that's, you know, off topic. So Muslims say, Muslims say, eh, you know, we should not copy the Jews and the Christians, it's forbidden, right? But, uh, you know, you cop you're you copying the, the prayer, you're copying everything, you even copy the Shema, right? And when Muhammad said in the Quran, 
Allah Wahad, he's trying to copy the Jews. He's copying the Old Testament. And the proof is in front of you. And here, guys, the word one in Hebrew is Echad, right? Echad is compound unity. And guys, please take notes. Take a pen and paper. I'm going to show you the Trinity from this very verse. From Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. The Lord, the Father, our God, is one Lord, right? So the, as you see in front of you, right? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit is one God. Echad means compound unity. It's unification of one, three persons in one God, right? As one God. Three persons as one God, right? Hear, O Israel, Shema, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, right? The Lord our God is one Lord. So, even in the Old Testament, you see the traces of the tree. So, you know, Muslims say, why, 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 why are you Muslims? Uh, sorry, why are you Christians, pagans? Why are you doing pagan acts? Well, the Trinity, the signature of the Trinity is all over the Holy Bible, in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Even if you go to the book of Genesis, you will see that, G that God is saying, we, right? We, right? Let me show you. Why did God not say, I? All right. If we go to the book of Genesis, let me show you. This is the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Right? The God, then God said, let us. Who's us? The Trinity. Right? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us make mankind in our image. Our image. In our likeness. So that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So us in our image. Wait a second. I found how Muhammad copied the Jews and the Christians yet again. Why? Because here, let me show you. Let me show you how Muhammad copied directly from this verse. This is from the same website that I used earlier. When the Prophet says, Allah created Adam in his image. So this is found from again this same Shaykh, Shaykh Muhammad. Salih al Munajid. Praise to Allah. Glory to Allah. Al Bukhari, hadith number 62, 27, and Sahih Muslim, hadith number 28, 41, narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet, Allah's prayer, Allah is still praying in the meantime. Allah is praying on Muhammad, saying, Allah created Adam in his image. What? Where did we find this, guys? Huh? Where did we just read this? From the book of Genesis. So here again, Muhammad is copying from the book of the Jews and the Christians. Shame on you, Muhammad, for being such a hypocrite when it said that Islam forbids the Muslims to imitate the Kufa. Copy from the Jews and the Christians. Copying the Jews and the Christians. Why are you being such a hypocrite, Muhammad, the fake prophet of Islam? Why are you being such a hypocrite, copying from our book? You are forbidding the Muslims to copy us, but at the same time you are copying from us. Huh? Allah created Adam in his image? Where did Muhammad get this, guys? Here, Muhammad tried to be friends with the Jews. In Medina, remember, when Muhammad went to Medina, at that time it was called Yathrib, it was a Jewish town. Then when he conquered it, he called it Medina, right? It was called Yathrib, it was a Jewish town or village. So, Muhammad tried to be friends with the Jews and he, you know, 
he's showing them you know i'm i'm he's trying to show them he's a prophet and he's quoting verses from the bible right not being nothing but a hypocrite trying to show them he's a true prophet but that the jews in medina were not stupid and they immediately saw this guy is, is a scam he's a fake prophet so muslims if you are listening if you are watching we just showed you how your fake prophet was nothing but a hypocrite copying from the Jews and the Christians. How dare you? How dare you? To say you are not allowed to copy from the Jews and the Christians. Why your own prophet did it. Right? Your own prophet did it. Right? And we showed you, like, like I said, we showed you that Islam is nothing but a pagan cult. Right? Allahu Ahad. Allah is one of many gods. He is God with Akbar. He is God together with his daughters, Allah al Uzza wal Manat, who used to intercede the, for the pagans. They used to carry the prayers of the pagans all the way to the supreme moon idol Allah and, and his wife, the son, Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Right? Allah and Akbar, the sun. <clears throat> so, let me show you something, guys. I had a small conversation with a guy who commented on my YouTube channel. It was really a funny, uh, let me make, make it bigger. It was really a funny, uh, discussion so this guy's saying i hope is, is the screen good guys is it good is it good can you read it can, can you see this guys i hope you, uh, it's big enough else let me know so here this guy's saying hello rob christian it, it was yesterday one day ago what is the proof that you are better than a dog so he's calling me a dog you know that you are such a useless person i tell you you're actually fuel of hell so this guy is insulting me you know muslims when you insult us you are giving us actually motivation to expose your filthy prophet your fake cult islam you are only making it much worse for yourselves because you are giving me more motivation to do live shows so when i re was reading this and i was when i was commenting back I was like, hey man, it's time to do a live show again because clearly we need to spank the Prophet of Islam more because as long you have people like this who are calling us dogs, calling us names, we have to do much harder work. So, so I told him, Sayyid Ahmed, I love you too, man. I love you too. Insulting me shows what kind of coward you are. If you call yourself a man, accept my challenge for debate on Skype, voice call. Awaiting your response to know if you have, if you, okay, I made here a typo, but if you are a boy or a man. So, this guy is replying back. He says, I have no need to prove my religion or my prophet. So, this guy, he's, he's a coward. My religion is right, and I know it, and I don't need to explain it to you. Oh, so, poor guy. So, he's, then he, so he, he felt the need to post a second comma before I could reply he says sorry for insult so he said sorry for insult because i here i said thank you you know i love you too for insulting me he says sorry for insult but no one can bear if someone says wrong about his beloved one so he's talking about his beloved prophet and i love my prophet a lot my prophet i and i love a lot my prophet we also respect and love Hazrat Isa alayhi salam and all the prophets. So he's talking about Jesus. Yeah, right. We have seen the love towards Jesus from you Muslims. Yeah. We have seen it many times. You know, when they feel the need, they will even insult Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, you know, Muslims, they lie. They don't, they, they never love Jesus. You know, but when they are in trouble, they will say such things. So I t tell him, Sayyid Ahmed, just go coward. You cannot prove anything. Talking text is cheap. You have no knowledge and no courage. Then he says, you have, Rob Christian, you have any proof of what you say? Sayyid Ahmad. So I, my, I replied seven hours ago. I replied, Sayyid Ahmad, 
Watch my videos, enough proof in all of my videos where I used only authentic Islamic sources like Quran and Sahih Hadith to prove that Islam is a big scam made by the fake Prophet Muhammad. I have more than 100 plus videos including live shows and live debate with Muslims who cannot defend Islam because Islam is a man-made cult. Even in this debate video, and I'm talking about the video that he commented on, in my video, I prove that Allah is commanding the angels to commit shirk because they have to do sujood, which means in Arabic prostration, to Adam. But the only good guy in Islam is actually Satan who refused to do sujood, act of worship, prostration to Adam. And then he replies, Okay, then you are shaitan. So he's calling me shaitan. He's calling me Satan. Because you know, I just exposed his fake God and his fake prophet. Asking for act of worship. Bowing down, prostrating in front of Adam. Allah is asking the angels. And I'm going to show it to you from the Quran. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2. Ayah 34. I'm here. I'm referring to this ayah. And then Allah, look what Allah is saying. And when we, Allah is saying, when we said unto the angels, so Allah is commanding the angels, right? Allah is commanding the angels, do sujood, is judu, prostrate, act of worship, bow down yourselves before Adam. So do shirk. So Allah is asking the angels to commit shirk, act of worship in front of Adam. So they fell and they did sujood. To, to Adam. So Allah is asking shirk. Who is the one? Who's the bad guy here? Allah. He's, because he is the one asking Adam to be worshipped by the angels. They fell prostrate. So who is the good guy? It's Iblis, Satan, because he refused. So in Islam, guys, the good guy is actually Satan because he refused to bow down. And not only that, why is Allah? Why is Allah? Punishing Satan while Satan is not an angel. Remember, right? Satan is not an angel. He's a jinn. So why does Allah feel the need to punish Satan for not listening? And who is the good guy? Satan. Allah is the bad guy because he's asking the angels. He's forcing the angels to prostrate to, to Adam. So, question Muslims. Question. If there's any Muslim who has some brain cells left. Ask yourself this question. Why is Allah sitting on the throne asking the angels, why is he asking them to worship Adam in front of him? That doesn't make sense, right? Right? That does not make sense. Why would Allah asking the angels to worship Adam? Any Muslim? Any Muslim? I think we are out of Muslims again, guys. So, this guy. This guy. Calling me Shaitan. So he said, okay, then you are Shaitan because you say that the one who don't bow down his head in front of Allah is Shaitan, then you are also Shaitan. So he's calling me Shaitan. Well, my, my friend, Satan is the good guy because he is refusing to commit shirk. He's refusing to worship Adam because Allah is asking for shirk. So who's the good guy? Satan, as we just proved to you from the Quran. And then he says, this guy is like a copy, copy paste machine. And look how many times he needs to, you know. So one message is not enough. So again, immediately he posts a second uh, message to me. And then the people who don't lie, they don't need to give any proof. So this guy, according to him, he's not a liar. So he doesn't need to give me proof, guys. He does not need to refute me, <laughs> according to him. What a sad Muslim. And as your eyes are closed be before truth. What truth, man? Who is, whose eyes are closed? Who? You or mine? Then watch the videos of Maulana Tariq Jamil. <laughs> Abdul, if you are watching, Mr. Sayyid Ahmed, if you are watching, this Sheikh or this Ustaz, whatever you want to call him, tell him there is a guy, his name is Rob Christian. Let him call me. My Skype is ID is the Rob Christian. 
the Rob Christian. If you have, if this so-called Maulana, this Imam, he thinks he knows about Islam, let him call me and refute me. Maybe he can end my career. Maybe he can silence me. Exposing this satanic cult called Islam and your fake prophet. So I hope you're watching and maybe you can give him a call and tell, give him my Skype ID so he can call me on my next live show. So, and he says, and if you say that it's fake, then how can anyone accept that you are real? Ah, whatever, man. So I answered, say, Ahmed, you're a donkey and here is why. You know what sujood means? You know what sujood means? It means to prostrate, as we explained earlier, guys. Prostration is an act of worship. Boom. So Allah is asking the angels, Allah is asking the angels to worship Adam. Right? By prostrating to him. Allah is asking for shirk. I'm asking him. Allah is asking for shirk. You're truly a donkey if you don't see the big problem here. Allah is God, but he forces the angels to worship Adam by doing sujood, by asking for sujood. Think Abdul. Just leave Islam as soon as possible. ASAP. ASAP. Leave this dark world. This pagan cult asking Allah asking his angels commanding his angels to worship Adam why why would you as Allah ask your angels your servants your slaves to bow down and do an act of worship prostration in front of Adam Islam is a cult and he didn't reply me back that was the last message Guys, I don't do a lot of messaging, to be honest, but, you know, sometimes it's fun, All right? So I, I hope this Maulana guy, his, his guy that he's so proud about, I hope he will call me soon, All right? So we showed you guys from the Quran how Allah is asking his angels to commit shirk. And then... I had a conversation with this Shia boy, another, you know, I was sick, so I was, in f I, I would have uh, gone live before, but I, I, as I told you, I was really sick, so I was laying down and I was doing some text messaging. So this Taqiyya Shia boy, Mr. Jarrar Haider is saying, why didn't you give me DNA test showing Christ is the Son of God? So he wants me to collect DNA samples of Jesus. <laughs> He's trying to be funny. Can't do that either, can't you? Anyway, I, you know, I don't, I didn't want to reply to that because, you know. But let me scroll back. Now, we were talking about how the Muslims, <clears throat> how the Muslims used to drink Alcohol. So I said, and this guy was also in between. Okay. So Sayyid Ahmed, according to you, because Muhammad and the Sahaba drink alcohol, Nabid, guys, Nabid in Arabic is wine. They are in hellfire, just like his parents, Abdullah and Amina. Now you change your words. So he did, this guy didn't uh, answer. So this guy came in between. Abu Huraira narrates of the fermented version of drink which was refused by Muhammad. I know that the Apostle of Allah used to keep fast. So according to him, you know, Nabid is haram. So I answered him back and said, Jarar, ha Jarar Haydar. Haydar is another name for Ali in Islam, guys. Shia, Shia Muslims call Ali also Haydar. So Mr. Haydar, you are such a fool to not understand that Nabid was drunk a lot during the time of your prophet. But when Muhammad became very sick in the last three years of his life. Why is the, the whole message not shown? I don't know. Can't even click on show more. Anyway, so I was talking about mentioning that in the last three years of the life of Muhammad. Here's a diagram that I created, guys. 
life of Muhammad in Islam's arrival. When Muhammad became a so-called prophet, self-proclaimed prophet when he was 40 in the year 610, and he was poisoned, he was poisoned, he became very sick. In the last, only in the last three years, he started to forbid alcoholic drinks. Now, why is that? Now, think with me here, guys. Because Muhammad was poisoned in Khaybar, when he conquered Khaybar, he was poisoned, remember that story? He was poisoned by a Jewish lady, and he killed her for it, right? So she poisoned him, and Muhammad became very sick, to the point that they, ha they had to drink, uh, drag Muhammad with his feet on, on the ground, you know? He could not even walk anymore. The Sahaba used to carry Muhammad, and his feet were on the ground, right? right? He could not walk anymore. Because he became very jealous of his own companions, of his own Sahaba, he started to forbid alcohol. Because he could not enjoy alcohol anymore. Right? And the proof is in front of you. Why did Muhammad not immediately forbid alcohol here, or here, or here, or here? Why did he forbid it in the last three years? Because he simply, he was very sick, and he really, really loved alcohol. Right? This is why... Thank you for the donations, guys. God bless you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. So, this is the reason why Muhammad started to forbid alcohol. Because he became very envious, very jealous. Seeing that his Sahaba were enjoying the drinks, the alcohol. Right? And he could not anymore because he was simply too sick. He had issues with his health. Right? He was really, really sick. Right? And you know what poison can do to one man's body, right? This is what I was referring to. So, and if we go to the Quran, let me go to the Quran, guys. This is Surah An Nahl, chapter 16, ayah 67. It says, And out of the fruits, read with me, and out of the fruits, are you with me, guys? Are you still with me? And out of the fruits of date palms and grapes, you derive intoxicants as well as wholesome substance. Surely that there is a sign for those who use reason. So according to this ayah, thank you for the one guys, thank you for confirmation. So according to this ayah, Allah is the one who gave the intoxicants. He is the one who gave alcoholic drinks to, the, to mankind. So it's halal, it's good, it's a sign, it's a miracle. According to Allah. It's something good. Right? He even say it's good. Right? Here's the word. It's something good. So alcohol drinks, according to the Quran, is a very good thing. And if we go to another ayah, I'm going to show you that the Sahaba used to drink so much alcohol to the fact that they even used to go drinking right intoxicated very drunk to the masjid to to the main mosque all you who believe so all you muslims so allah is saying in the quran all you who believe draw not near unto prayer when you are drunken wait a second muslims always say muslims always say alcohol is forbidden but your Sahaba, your the very first generation of Muslims, and you remember what did Muslim Muhammad say about the very first generation? The first generations are the best Muslims according to Muhammad and Islam. So the Sahaba used to go in a drunken state as drunkards to pray in the mosque. So here Allah is saying, don't go pray when you are drunk. Did you, see, did you see that? How many, how many people knew about this, guys? How many Muslims know about it? That the Sahaba actually went in an act of being drunk. Being drunk, they used to go and pray. Right? So here, Muhammad was still allowing Muslims to drink. And even they used to go drink, very drunk, to, to, to the prayer of the uh, house of Allah. Right? To Masjid al-Haram. You see that? Intoxicated. Thank you. Sorry guys, sometimes my English 
you know, English is not my first language, Arabic is. So as you see, the Sahaba, they used to drink more than you and me. They were really party boys. All night long, all night long. Like Lion Richie would have said, all night long. Drinking Nabit, which is wine. And we are going to prove to you from the Hadith. The Nabit, which is the wine. This is from Sunan and Nisa. The Nabit that Umar ibn al-Khattab, one of the four rightly gated caliphs, that's why they call them, the first four guys, right? The first four caliphs. Umar is one of them. Remember? The first guy was Abu Bakr, right? Then Omar became the second caliph. So the Nabi that Omar bin al-Khattab used to drink had turned to vinegar. Now, question. When you leave a bottle of wine for, let's say, two weeks, what will happen to the bottle of wine? It will become vinegar, right? Right? Especially if it's very cheap uh, wine. If you leave it open, or let's say, even in the fridge, if you leave it for a couple of weeks, it will become vinegar. True story. I have experienced that. I once, once I left a bottle of wine in the fridge, and after a couple of weeks, I had no clue. So I drink it. I forgot about the bottle, and it really tasted like vinegar. It turns sour. Exactly, Thomas. Correct. So, as you see, even Omar ibn al-Khattab used to drink Nabit. Ha! Ah. Aha! Antoine saying, ha! Aha! So even Umar al -Khatt ibn Khattab used to drink wine. More than you and me, guys. I kid you not. And if we go to another hadith, this is from Sahih Muslim. Sahih, 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 Sahih. Hadith number 2005b. Look what Aisha is saying. The lovely baby bride Aisha. That Muhammad... Okay, let me let me not go there. You know, this even the book is called the book of drinks, the alcoholic drinks in this case. Even the book is called the book of drinks. This is the book of drinks. All night long, all night long. <laughs> so Aisha saying, we prepared Nabid for Allah's messenger. Allah is praying on him in the meanwhile in a water skin. What? So they prepared wine for Muhammad in a water skin. The upper part which was tied and it, the water skin had a hole. It's the lower part. We prepared the Nabid in the morning. Look how, how long Muhammad is drinking wine, guys. So Muhammad drink wine. So they prepared in the morning and he drank. Muhammad drank the wine in the evening. So Muhammad is drinking in the evening. Count with me, guys. And we prepared the Wanabid in the night and he would drink it in the morning. So Muhammad used to drink wine in the evening and he used to drink wine in the morning. I mean, do you guys drink wine in the evening and in the morning? Would you do that? No, I, I can't do that. So Muhammad had a really, really nice experience with wine. He was an experienced drink, drinker of wine, of Nabid, together with Omar ibn al-Khattab. And the other homeboys that we call the Sahaba. All night long and even in the morning. <laughs> Lord of mercy. And they say, only you Christians. Christians. We don't copy Christians. How dare you copy the Christians? Muslims, why are you going to the clubs? Why are you drinking? It's haram, akhi. But wait a second. Muhammad and his homeboys, the Sahaba, used to drink Nabid more than you and me, partying all night long and in the evening and in the morning. The drunken prophet, exactly, Peter. So how dare you, Muslims? How dare you to say that your prophet, you Muslims, are not copying the Jews and the Christians? How dare you? Why are you such hypocrites? Why are your own prophet used to copy the Jews and the Christians? He used to drink alcohol more than you and me. 
Now, I'm not even talking about the camel urine. Forget, forget about the camel urine. Right? So yeah, Muhammad loves Jack Daniels. Right? Any Muslim? Do you have any Muslim? And by this, guys, we can conclude that Muhammad was nothing but a copy-paste prophet. We can say that the teaching is over. So, if there are, if there are any questions, guys, in the text, if there are any questions, please ask them. If there are any Muslims, call me live on Skype and show me. If you have the courage and the knowledge, stick with the topic of today. And show me that I'm lying. Show me. Silence me. End my career, please. Halal alcohol, yeah. So yeah, as, as I showed you guys, Muhammad became so jealous because here in this period, right, he used to drink. And he, when he became very sick, he stopped drinking because, you know, when you're sick, you can't drink alcohol. It's really bad for your health, right? So, because he was very jealous of the Sahaba, the party homeboys, right? Who drink like Omar. We showed you Omar, right? Who used to drink Nabid. Muhammad drank Nabid. But when Muhammad became very sick, he became jealous of people like Omar, people like Ali, right? So he started to forbid it because he could not party anymore with them. Yeah, Karian, do you like my voice? All night long. Uh, my, my, my voice is really bad now. I'm really sick. So, the ultimate truth. Uh, he's a kid, man. He, uh, I'm sure he will say this hadith is uh, fake. It's daif. By the way, this is sahih. Sahih Muslim. Right? Muhammad was a really experienced drinker. Drinking at night. Drinking in the morning. Nabid. And they say Nabid is not mine. You really? Who are you lying to, man? I'm an Arab. We know what Nabid means, guys. Nabid is alcoholic drink. Right? It's wine. <clears throat> right? It's wine. Give me one Arab. If there is an Arabic Muslim, Arabic speaking Muslim, call me. And refute me that Nabid is not wine. I challenge you. Right? Any Muslim? Uh, do we have any Ustaz who can refute me on this matter? Is there any Ustaz? From Indonesia. Maybe we have an... Yeah, Sahih Nabid, exactly. Do we have any Ustaz? Do we have any Muslim? Huh? Hello? We have 123 people and no Muslim has the courage or the knowledge or is man enough to call me live on my Skype. My Skype is open, guys. Come on. People, are there any questions in the text from our dear brothers and sisters in Christ? Sorry if I missed your questions during the teaching. Because, you know, I can do two things at the same time. So, I don't always look at the chat when I'm teaching or going through the Quran. If you have any questions, guys, fire away. Maybe if there is no Muslim, you can call me on my Skype as a Christian. But let us see if there's any Muslim first. Yeah, my Skype ID is the Arab Christian. I think our lovely admins who are doing an amazing job today, they don't know that I'm back after one month. So maybe they didn't get a notification from YouTube yet. Sometimes YouTube... For some reason, even if you click on the notification bell. So please guys, just to make sure, you know how YouTube can be amazing sometimes. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button because we also need the likes to go on the leaderboards or whatever it's called. And don't also forget to click on the notification bell to see the notifications, right? To get notifications when we go live. 
Yeah, sometimes YouTube is really a pain in the ass. Alright. Thank you, Psalm 23. God bless you too, my friend. Yeah, I, I really miss this. I really missed uh, <clears throat> teaching. I missed talking to you guys, you know. I'm still kind of sick, but yeah, that does not hold me back to, to do the Lord's work. Because God is commanding us in the Holy Bible to expose false teaching. And Islam is nothing but a false teaching. And expose false prophets like Muhammad. And that's what we have to do. And we also, if there are really Muslims watching and who enjoyed today's teaching and saw that we did not lie, I challenge any Muslim to show me where I lied. If they saw the truth about Muhammad today, the real truth, the hidden truth, how many Muslims know that Muhammad actually did party, drink, in the evening, in the morning, drinking alcohol together with the Sahab. Thank you, Sophia Brown. I really appreciate it. God bless you and your family. God bless everyone in the chat. God bless everyone who is supporting us. Please invite Muslims, if you have any Muslims on social media, as friends or whatever. No, I'm not Turkish. I'm not Turkish. I'm Assyrian. Like Sam Shimon, I'm Assyrian. I am one of the last Christians, guys, on this planet who still speaks the language of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is Aramaic. Assyrians speak Aramaic. Have you ever watched the video or the movie called Passion, Passion of Christ? I speak that language of Jesus, right? Because Jesus used to speak Aramaic. So, yeah, they really wanted to get rid of us. Actually, uh, in 1915, a lot of Assyrians used to live in Turkey. In 1915, the Turkish government, they wanted to exterminate. They committed a genocide on the real Syrian people, Syriac people, Aramaic people, Assyrian, whatever you want to call us, the ones who speak the Aramaic language, the language that Jesus used to speak. They wanted to get rid of us, while well, the whole Syria, Turkey, all these countries, Iraq, Egypt, even Yemen, these were all Christian countries. They forced the Arabic language on us. We are not Arabic speaking people, we are Christians in the Middle East. I'm a Christian from the Middle East. The Arabic language was forced on us. Don't forget that, guys. So, I, you know, Jesus said, Jesus said, in my name you will be persecuted. You will be blessed if they persecute you. You will be blessed if they insult you. And I've, I've been getting a lot of threats. I've been insulted many times. We showed you today, right? Muslims insult us left and right. But for me, that's a blessing. It's a motivation to keep doing what we are doing. So, guys, don't forget, please, when we are done teaching, if you like some parts of the video, download the video after YouTube processes it because it's a long video. We are now over an hour live and there is no Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call me live on Skype to refute me. Right? No, I am not. I am originally from the Middle East, but I'm not in the Middle East anymore because I would have not done what I'm doing right now. Right? But, you know, they can't trace us. So we are still doing this and... We have the technology to, to do this without, you know, I don't want to go too deep in that, but you know what I'm using, right? So no, we're in the West, we're doing this in the West freely, without any shame. But we are doing this for the truth, and only the truth will prevail, right? We are exposing this dark cult. For Muslims to be saved. Ultimate truth. You are the coward. Who are you calling coward man? How am I coward when I'm live. Doing this live. And no Muslim has the courage. To call me live and refute me. Who is the coward now? Shame on you for being a hypocrite. Who are you calling coward? Coward? Who are you calling a coward? Mr. Coward? 
you hypocrite, like your prophet, saying you are not allowed to imitate Christians and Jews, but the next thing Muhammad is doing is copying from the Shema, copying from our holy scripture, saying that Allah created Adam in his image, right? What is this nonsense, man? Copying the Bible, copying our rituals, even the way we pray, right? Even the rosary that Christians, some Christians use. I don't use rosary, to be honest, when I pray. But, you know, some Christians use this as a tradition. And they have 33 beads. I think it's called beads, right? For the age of Christ, when he was 33. When he died on the cross, he was 33. So they use 33. And even the Muslims use 33. They, you know, when you ask a Muslim, where, where did you get this rosary from? He can't even answer the question. Yeah. You know, it's not the late tradition, you know. I'm not going to say it's bad or good. Yeah, we appreciate your, appreciate your donation. Thank you for your donations, guys. Thank you. God bless you. <clears throat> so, do we have any Muslim? Okay, since there are no Muslims, guys, you by now you know my Skype. If you have the need or the urge to call me as a Christian, uh, you can call me. Right? You can call me if you have any question or on today's topic. Please try to stick to the topic. Not go too much off topic. Right? Yeah, you know, Erdogan, you know, yeah, I don't want to go to politics. I don't like politics, to be honest. If someone is calling me, I think I know this caller. Hello? Hey. Hello, hello. Hey, what's up, Rob? What's up, man? Well, I got I to gotta say something, you know. Yeah. Like the Muslim defense, uh, remember you, you made a video, the bisexual prophet of Islam. Oh yeah, of course, man. The Northern Muslims defense for Muhammad kissing man. Uh, he, he was not, he was just hitting them, you know, as a joke or, you know. This video, you mean, you see it on the screen, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, this was a really, really one of my best videos, to be honest with you. We proved that Muhammad is bisexual. He had sexual activities not only with women, many women, but also with many men. And he was raped by his own cousin. And, and not, a, not only cousin, but his own uncle, who used to sleep naked together with Muhammad, naked in, his, in the bed of his uncle. But, you know, that's off topic. But yeah, what, what, do you want, what do you want to say about that video, bro? What I wanted to say is that the Muslim defense is that for one of the hadiths where Muhammad was kissing a man on the belly, he's, he said it was a joke by Muhammad. <laughs> a joke, yeah, yeah. But it's normal for it, a prophet to lift someone's shirt and kiss him on his belly. Yeah, that's really a nice joke. Yeah. But doesn't the Arabic not see mean shirt? It means like the Arabic dress. He did not pull up the shirt. He pulled up their whole thobe. Yeah. You know that. So he saw his uh, ding 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 a ling. Uh, you know, he saw his uh, panties. Not only that, he saw his behind. And he kissed on his belly. That's normal for a prophet of God to do that? Is that what you're trying to say, bro? Yeah, what I'm saying is that the Muslims claim that it was only his shirt, but the translation, but the actual thing <laughs> is that he put the whole, whole thing. And there was no underwear back then in the time of Muhammad, so Muhammad must have seen everything. I, I, I'm, I'm sure Muhammad would have said, like he said to Zainab bint Jash, his daughter-in-law, when he... Uh, fell in love with her. Subhan qallib al qulub. Did Muhammad also say that to that man when you know? Subhan qallib al qulub for you know. You, do you think Muhammad said that also? What do you think? <laughs> Maybe. Glory, we'll glory to the one who turns hearts. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, but remember there was a there was a salt water and spice um, conversation. Remember? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, I I honestly think that's referring to semen, man. Yeah, yeah. I um uh, I think did I put the the link? In, uh, I'm not sure if I put the link, but <clears throat> I gave the link. I think somewhere in the text about that.
topic. You know, we used a very nice website and we went to the most authentic sources, right? Okay, here's the link. Let me also give it in the chat. You know, if you don't believe us, guys, maybe you are lying. Maybe you are lying about Muhammad was actually a bisexual prophet. Here's the link with enough Islamic authentic sources to, to prove to you that Muhammad was actually a bisexual guy, right? We're not lying to you. you. Your own books are like saying the, that, right? The more the more explicit sources that mention his actual where he was supposedly written by angels, supposedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. naked. Yeah, you, uh, naked angels riding the prophet, right? Like a donkey. That, <laughs> that, that wasn't a, um, yeah. you know, Arabic only sources because Muslims are ashamed. They all they hide these hadiths in. In Arabic, yeah. they don't translate wait, bro, into wait. English. Before we uh, continue, let's. I hope the site is still working. No, the, it's still working. So the Muslims did not ban the website or have taken it down. It's somewhere in the last part, right? If I'm not mistaken. The, Which one? The, the about angel? the angels. Yes. Riding Muhammad naked, to be on. To, I'm, to I'm be going to that very one specific. too. Uh, yeah, here, here. Remember where, that, that we just mentioned. To kiss him on the torso, you just mentioned it, right? Remember, this hadith is sahih al isnad. It's sahih chain. Yeah. So there's, there's you know, Muhammad kissing the the side of a naked side of a man. Yeah, Muhammad. Well, what is Here, it called? This is this is the one. This is the one that you're talking about. Naked angels riding Rasul Allah, sallallahu Allah praying on him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam until the sunrise. <laughs> So there are a group of people, and then Afan confirmed the following description of these people. Inshallah, if if Allah wills, they are naked. The angels are naked, and I cannot see their genitals tall and thin. They became and kept riding Rasulullah. <laughs> Allah <Allahu> Akbar. <laughs> so they kept riding over him. Then Abdullah continues to say, they also came to me. I rotate naked around me and stay in my way. So I was so terrified. Yeah, of course, if you see naked angels. So from them, so I sat, sat down until the first light of sunrise when they left. Then Rasulullah came feeling heaviness and pain cause of them being riding him. Did you see it? They are riding. Now, this is Sahih. Don't say it's Baif. Right? Yeah, it's pretty uh, just bad for the Muslims. This is disturbing, Muslims. man. I mean, if this is my prophet, I would be really shocked. Muslims, naked angels riding the prophet of Islam. I don't think it's uh, definitely. Here's the, Arabic, here's, the, here's the Arabic reference, guys. This is from the most trusted website online, IslamWeb.net. We gave you the link. Let me give you the link again because, you know, we don't like Muslims to say Rob Christian is a liar. Go and study the authentic sources. We're not lying. Right? Isnadahu Sahih. Isnadahu Sahih. Sahih. Chain of narration. Right? Oh, Rob. Yeah. I wanted to talk about something else. We're not going to go to that verse, but. Remember in the and remember when ultimate shirk ultimate yeah, yeah look 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 what ultimate shirk is saying your god had sex with his mother Rob and he's laughing he's, about he's it saying, he's saying that, you that truly, again yeah yeah you truly have no shame you have no dignity Mr Ultimate shirk well, we, we, but everybody busted him over that because begotten does not mean sex it means to make one of the same kind yeah it's, so only it's, God you know God. here the father begotten guys begotten means. He shares the same equality of the father. It's unique. It's the same equality. That's what begotten means. Because the, you need to understand, you know, this ultimate shirk, he loves to stay in the dark. He loves to follow this right. satanic ses sex cult called Islam. He let him, let him. You know, I, I don't even want to ban him. Right? I don't I wanna even want to ban him in the chat. So let him, maybe he can learn someday, maybe... Lord willing, someday God will open up his eyes. So pray for this guy, guys. Don't please don't insult him in the text. Please. You don't right. see me insult him. Don't insult this guy. He's the one who's in the left. He's enjoying his evilness. Thank you. Lying about Jesus. That Jesus Bye. God forbid that Jesus raped his own mother. Shame on you, man. You're, you Muslims say we love Jesus. Yeah, we see. You see, guys? 
Do you remember when I said it? Muslims always say, we respect Jesus. But at the same time, look what they are saying about Jesus. You Muslims, some, not, not every Muslim is like this, right? We, there are really a lot of sincere Muslims. You know, there are Muslims who are really in, in need. This is why we are doing this, right, my friend? So please don't insult the Muslims who are insulting our Lord and Savior. Don't insult them if they insult you. Have pity on them. Show them the truth. And the tr truth is in front. Because this guy, guy, why is he so mad? Why is he insulting Jesus? Because we are showing him that Muhammad was getting ridden by the naked angels. We are showing him that Muhammad was raped by his own cousin. This is why he's so mad. Ibn Ammi Fahataka Ardi. My cousin, the son of my uncle, raped me. That's what Muhammad is saying in the Arabic, right? Ibn Ammi Hataka Ardi. Right? Ibn Ammi Hataka Ardi. And here's the Isnad. I give you the link. Muhammad is saying that his own cousin raped him. So Muslims, because they are getting mad, they know this is true. Only thing they can do is insult our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They have no shame, they have no dignity. Because they can't handle the truth, they... Yeah, I can post the link again, no problem. So because they can't handle the truth, they have to start insulting Jesus Christ. And in the same time, they say, yeah... We love Jesus. We love Isa. Yeah, you love Isa, right? Liars. Yeah, Muhammad was raped. And not, not very easily raped, you know? They raped him. His uncle raped him. The sons of his uncles, his cousin raped him. My friend, do you have to say anything else? Or he hang up? Okay. Our friend hang up. So... Yeah, maybe I lost him. Uh, maybe his internet connection is bad. My friend, don't steal the Wi-Fi of your neighbors. We also all say that to the Muslims, you know. Don't be like the Muslims. Don't copy the Muslims, man. <laughs> don't steal the Wi-Fi of your neighbors. Iran, yeah. Nah. Uh, the guy who just called, I know him, is a good friend from, uh, from Discord. We, uh, we know each other. <clears throat> So, any Muslim? Oh, do we have only ultimate shirk who is uh, trying to show us that he uh, loves Jesus very much? Yeah, they love Jesus, but they don't follow Jesus, but they love to insult Jesus. That's the true love of Muslims towards Jesus. They love him to death. They love to insult him to death. Yeah. Crusade time? <laughs> no. Nah. You know, guys, about the crusade, if there would be any crusade, I will be one of the first ones who, to join that crusade. But only if it's defense. We are not allowed to do offense, right? If a Muslim, all right, general, starts to do jihad on my country, I will be one of the first who grabs a gun to defend my family and my loved ones, my country. Nothing wrong with defense, right? That's what the Bible teaches. The Bible doesn't teach us. Some Christians here in the West, they think we Christians. Jesus was a hippie. The apostles were hippies, right? We are not hippies. We are allowed to do self-defense. Where do you think the, the Western government got the laws for self-defense from? It's a biblical teaching, self-defense. We are not hippies, right? But, you know, we don't, we are not to do offense, right? Because if we use the word in offense, the sword in offense, we will die by that same sword, said Jesus, right? If you use the sword, you will die by that sword. So, self-defense is biblical, right? Can you talk about Quran corruption next time? Well, uh, why Maria? We have talked many times about the corruption of the Quran. But I can show you something. Let me show you. 
you know, I don't want to go too much off topic, but since there are no Muslims around who can uh, refute me or call me on Skype, let me see. Uh, da, da, da. Where did I? Uh... <clears throat> okay, I think I found it. Or not? Second. When you need something, okay, yeah, I found it. Here's the here's the one of the proofs, one of the, of the examples that I can show you from the mouth of Aisha. The verse of stoning. Now pay attention. If you you are the one who were asking, right? I, let me scroll back. Who was asking that? Sorry. Why Maria? Can you talk about corruption of the Quran? Pay attention, my Maria. Are you with me, sister? Why, Maria? Are you with me? Give me one if you are still with me. Give me one if you are still with me. Guys, are you seeing the text? The screen? Okay, good. So here, this is from the mouth of Aisha. This is the baby bride of Muhammad. Right? Aisha saying, the verse of stoning of the Quran, now pay attention and take notes. The verse of stoning and of adult breastfeeding, so two verses, an adult ten times was revealed. So Allah revealed ayahs of the Quran. One of them is the verse of stoning and the verse of adult breastfeeding. So doing this as an adult to a woman. You know, I don't want to go too many disgusting details, but yeah. We talked about that before. So those ayahs were revealed and the paper was with Aisha. She, it was with her, under her pillow. Did you catch it? So she had a paper with these ayahs written down on them. When Muhammad died, when the Messenger of Allah died, pay attention, we were preoccupied with his death. So Aisha was really busy with the death of Muhammad. Muhammad just recently died, right? And a tame, a tame sheep, now pay attention, a tame sheep came in and ate those papers with the eyes of stoning and adult breastfeeding ten times on them, and the sheep ate those eyes. So these verses were abrogated in recitation, but not really. So here is one of the examples how the Quran got corrupted by the goat of Aisha, right? This is Sunan Ibn Majah, hadith number 1944. Let me give you the link in the chat. So here, as you see, if you ask a Muslim, why Maria? Give me one if you're still with me, sister. If you ask a Muslim, where is the ayah in the Quran of the verse of stoning, the ayah of stoning, the verse of stoning, and where is the verse of adult breastfeeding 10 times? If you ask them, they say it's not in the Quran anymore. But why? Well, here is why. A tame sheep came and ate them. So the goat of Aisha corrupted the Quran. I think, why Maria? I think when the, the sheep of Aisha ate the Quran ayahs, it became a very holy sheep. And, we, and Muslims are still looking for this holy sheep. Where is the sheep to slaughter it and take the ayahs, the verses? Yeah, it's not in the Quran anymore. So they have to find the sheep, they're still looking for the sheep to slaughter the sheep and take the ayahs out of his belly. So the sheep became, the sheep of Aisha is Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the sheep because it became holy, it ate the Quran. 
So why did Allah not protect? If Allah is really truly God in Islam, why did he not protect his Quran? And while Muhammad, you know, Muhammad always in the Quran says, and Allah is in the Quran saying, Allah will protect the Quran. When you ask Muslims, who will protect the Quran from corrupt, being corrupted? Allah. But why didn't Allah, this is a, being a hypocrite Muslims, you are being hypocrite. Why didn't Allah protect the Quran from the sheep? Look how tiny, puny God is Allah is, that he cannot protect his uncorrupted, so-called protected Quran from the sheep of Aish. Sheep, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Allahu Akbar! <laughs> a sheep can eat the Quran? Uh oh. Any Muslim? Any Muslim? Maybe we have a Muslim who finally, after 1400 years, found this sheep so we can slaughter it on Eid al Adha. Remember the celebration of sacrifice? Maybe we can celebrate on that day and slaughter the sheep. And maybe we can take the finally after 1400 years, we can bring back those verses and put them again back in the Quran. The most wanted sheep, America's most wanted. Yeah. Let's see who's calling me, guys. Hello? Oh, my friend, yes. it's you again. What's up? Stop running from... It's you truth. again. <laughs> oh, Mr. <laughs> Ultimate Shirk. How are you? How are you, Ultimate I, Shirk? How are you? you made a new account? Uh, yes, yeah? I did. Because yeah? you're a coward, man. You're running away, bro. Yeah, I'm running. Look, I'm running away, man. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm running away, man. You see, I'm, I'm here. No. I'm running. I'm really scared. <laughs> okay, now, show me you're, you ain't scared. Yeah. You got no, okay, years. wait, wait, wait. Are you going? Are you. you going to stay topic this time, or are you going yes. to say that Every again? You, you are without any shame saying that Jesus, Anything that you love you so much. We love Jesus, but you just said in the text, no. Jesus the raped topic. his own mother. You got a topic. Do you have, no, no, do you have no, any no, shame? No. Do you have any dignity, my if friend? If you do that, if you do that, I will do. Okay, okay, I, I will, okay, I will okay. Refute me on today's on topic. topic. You, you Muslims yeah. say we don't copy Jews and Christians. Why are you copying Jews and Christians? Why did you prophet copy Jews and Christians? Why did your prophet? Why did your prophet copy the Jews and Christians okay. in the way of praying? Why did your prophet say that Allah created Adam in His own image? Well, that's from the Bible. We showed you that that's from the Bible. Why is Muhammad drinking like the Jews and the Christians alcohol? Nabi. One question at a time. One question at a time. Let me answer what one question. You said why are we copying Jews yeah. and Christians, right? Yeah. So I, I'm sure you're not saying that Jews and Christians are supposed to be drinking because the Bible said don't drink. So the Bible so doesn't say go don't drink. What? The Bible say don't drink. The Bible say don't drink. My friend, you didn't Jesus that? didn't Jesus turn uh, water into wine? What, what's yeah, wrong? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Wine. You know it or not? Or, didn't or, Jesus or say? Didn't Jesus gave the wine to his you followers to his disciples? Wait, 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 wait! Why are you lying? Didn't Jesus give his own apostles? Do you the want a verse no, from Let me Christ. talk. Let me talk. You just said made a, made a claim. I am exposing you. I am I'm spanking you. Didn't Jesus said, say, take this going, cup of wine as my blood, symbolize my blood? Rob, Didn't he give it his 12? You Rob, know, you know, you know, just go, just go, just go. I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't have time for kids. I don't have time for kids. Saying alcohol is forbidden Christian, while well, Jesus himself gave a cup of wine. Don't call me, Abdul. Don't call me. Don't call me. I have no time for children. You make a claim, you get spanked, that's it. I don't have time to, you know. Abdu. I don't have time for people like this guy. Really, I don't have time. Enough is enough, right? So, you know, when, when you are a donkey, even a donkey, you know, even a donkey, if if a donkey guys if a donkey smack his head against the wall after one time he will understand you know if i with my head go inside that wall against the wall it will hurt my head so second time he wants to stop doing that but this ultimate shirk he doesn't learn from it 
Every time he calls me, he gets spanked. Okay, Angelo is asking me to show Mark Mark 7. No problem. It's my pleasure, my friend. Mark 7, verse 19. Let me show that on the... This is Mark 7, 19. What about it? Let's read. For it doesn't go into their heart, but into their stomach, and then out of the body. I'm saying this, Jesus declared the food's clean. So... It's not basically, Angelo, what you're saying, what Ange our dear brother, who basically, guys, by the way, Angelo is the one who created my uh, intro video. I really want to thank him in front of everybody. I will never forget what he did for me. He created this intro for me. So thank you again, my friend, my dear friend and brother in Christ, Angelo. You did an amazing job. So this, this is the verse that you're asking for. This is Mark 7. Verse 19, right? This is the verse that you're talking about, Angelo? Yeah. So, it doesn't... It's not what it goes inside your body that makes you filthy, but it's what is going outside of your body that makes you filthy. So, it's not what I eat that makes me filthy, but when I... You know, you will know me by my fruit. When I say something bad, I use foul language. I don't respect people. That's what coming out of my mouth that's what is filthy. Not by drinking wine or eating a pig. You know, everything Jesus declared all foods and drinks clean. So this is why Christians are allowed to eat all foods. They are allowed to eat all drinks. So it's not what... It's nothing that enters a man from the outside can defile him. It's what comes from his heart. His nasty behavior. Like this guy, this ultimate shirt that just called me, who doesn't learn from getting spanked every day. This is not the first time, guys, who, that he called me. Every time this guy calls me, makes a new account, calls me, gets spanked, and then I have to handle him like a kid. Down boy, down boy. You know? Down boy. So, again, it's not what comes inside your mouth like wine like food that defiles you but what comes out of your mouth from the heart you know by the fruits you will know them right by the fruits you will know them muslims don't learn how many times did we talk about this how many times did we mention this how many times did christian prince mention this how many times did Sham sam shamu mention this or david or other warriors in christ right it's what comes out of your heart, out of your mouth, that devours you, right? What comes out of a man, that is what defiles you. Did you catch it? No, no, uh, Russell, yep, my friend, don't use this language, okay, please. You know... If you, if you noticed, we don't need to use bad language, my friend. Come on. All right? They are the ones who are victims of this satanic cult. We don't need to use bad language. And he, it's, the proof is in front of you. Right? So, guys, don't please, for the Lord's sake, don't insult Muslims back. When they insult you... You know what Jesus said, right? They will insult you in my name. They will persecute you. They even might kill you. But you are blessed. I wish to die for my Lord. I love to be insulted for my Lord. That's what a true Christian is. You are blessed when they do that. You know, you know what, what amazing blessing you get? You know when, when you have Muslims who call me all kinds of names. And we showed you in the beginning, right? We showed you how many times I get insulted i get insulted every time but for me that's motivation it's a blessing to keep doing what we are doing right angelo brother you want to call you want to call me on skype if you want to call me please feel free and maybe you want to add something on top of this so thank you for uh, mark 7 verse 19 and the proof is in front of you that everything is a lot. So we had ultimate shirk who just called in the Muslim. Lying about the Bible. Right? 
This is how Muslims are. They love to lie. And the proof just spanked him. The proof is in front of you. Sir, stop using taqiyya. It's not working anymore. It's 2019. Lying, taqiyya, does not work on Christians anymore. We can read. We have the Bible. We have the Quran online. We have the Hadith. We can spank you with your own authentic sources. We can spank your lies as we just did from the Bible. You lied about the Bible and you got exposed and served. Take beer. Take a beer. Abdul, Mr. Ultimate Shirk. You are nothing but a liar. And we know what kind of fruit you bear. All right. Keep saying, keep saying, keep claiming that Jesus raped his own mother. You filthy dog. You are nothing but a filthy dog. All right. You love Jesus, huh? Yeah, you love Jesus, so you need to lie about him. You need to lie about his teaching, and the proof is in front of you. Take a beer. Right? Please, God, this man, this man doesn't know what he's doing. Please forgive him. Right? Remember what Stephen said, guys, when he was getting stoned to death outside the walls of Jerusalem? Please, God, forgive them, for they don't not know what they do. And this is a perfect example. Shame on you, Muslims. Shame on you for doing this nasty behavior. Lying about our scripture. And you just got spanked and served. And the proof is in front of everybody to see. Any Muslim who has the knowledge and the courage, are, are we having ustaz who maybe can call me. Is there any ustaz from Indonesia who can protect Islam from me? Please call him. I mean, come on, man. We have so many people watching. We have 156, sorry, 156 people watching. And no Muslim has the courage and the knowledge to call me. Except this ultimate shirk who just lied about the Bible and got spanked. And serve for everybody to see. Mayday, mayday. Yeah. Uh, Angelo, if you want to call me, bro, my Skype is open, okay? If you want to call me. Of, or anyone else, you know. We had two calls one from a dear Christian friend of mine, dear Christian brother. And we had the ultimate shirk who just got spent. Any Muslim made it. Do we have any ustaz among us who can protect Islam from us? I mean, talk is cheap in text. You know. Everyone can text. But show us the proof. Refute me. Silence me, as Muhammad Hijab would have said. Yeah. I know Thomas Medio. I know. I know, man. Red Prophet, my friend, um, to be honest with you, I'm nothing. I, you know, I, what I know, God gave me this language, this Arabic language, and I'm using it for the greater good. Right? I know Arabic, and I'm using it I know about Islam and I'm using it. And, you know, I'm not very good. I'm not as skilled as others. There are many skilled Christian apologists who know much more about the Bible than me. But, you know, we can protect the Bible. I have enough information and knowledge to protect, you know. So, th th what I always say, guys, if you want to... Expose Islam. If you want to debate Muslims, make sure to know your own Bible first. Right? You know, being an apologist, what I always say, defense is the best offense. Right? Don't go in the line, lines then if you can defend your scripture, own scripture first. Right? Right? 
I know a lot of people, guys, when I used to sit on Paul Talk, remember Paul Talk? I used to go there, Christian Prince used to go there, even Zakaria Butros, you know, that guy who has his own uh, TV show, satellite TV show, he used to go there and debate Muslims. And I've seen, I've seen many Christians there who don't know anything about the scripture. Go in the lines then, and Muslims asking them a couple of questions about Christianity. In them, and they can't answer. I mean, what's the point of to go to an uh, Islamic room while you can't even answer one question about the Bible? Right? So make sure to know your own scripture first, because the best offense is defense. Right? Hey, what's up? <laughs> I called you again. Whoa. Yeah, what's up, my friend? Stop using uh, the Wi Fi okay. of your neighbors, man. What's wrong with you? Nah, just kidding. <laughs> it sucks. Oh, is it good now? Was, was, it, was well, it good? Was it good with that uh, Ultimate Shirk? What do you think? Did he make a nice well, point? <laughs> no, not really, because he's taking these verses out of context. If you see them on the chat, he's yeah. taking Proverbs out of context. That's what they do, right? They can't. They, uh, do just, anything but go refute Google. refute us with lies, right? Use lies, yeah. uh, destroy the, what the context of the scripture of the Christian Bible, right? The Bible, they misquote it. That's what they can do because they go to Islamic websites, they read a couple verses from there. They don't actually read the Bible. They say, like you said, you know, alcohol is not uh, allowed in the Bible, and we showed you from Mark seven nineteen that we are allowed. Why are you lying about our scripture, right? And there's even there's even some I think in uh in uh in the Old Testament that says drinking is good for a fun and merry time. Yeah, but like we show you know it's not only that we showed you also from the Quran that wine is from Allah. So if you yes. want to blame Allah, if you want to blame someone, blame Allah. He's the one saying, look, it's the Quran. This is Quran, chapter sixteen. Don't don't blame me. This is the Quran. This is not my Quran, yeah. this is your Quran, Muslims. Chapter 16, Surah An-Nahl, Ayah 67. And out of the fruits of dates, palms and grapes, you derive intoxicants. You know what intoxicants are? Those are alcoholic drinks. So Allah is the one allowing alcoholic drinks. Right? He's, he's also Allah promises alcohol. So why are you alcohol. lying? If, if Allah uh, is the one uh, making alcohol halal, alcoholic drinks halal. You hypocrite Muslim. I don't think alcohol is even haram in the in the Quran, is it? No, you know here, uh, you know some Muslims will go to this ayah, uh, chapter four, ayah forty three. Say, you know, oh you believe, draw not near unto prayer when you are drunken. But it doesn't say it's haram. It says if you read it correctly, it says don't go in a drunken state to prayer, right? So you are still allowed to drink, but don't be drunk and pray at the same time. And we showed from the hadith how Omar ibn Khattab drink wine, Nabi. How Muhammad drink wine in the night and in the morning. So who are you, right? Well, the, st the thing is, is that the, the hadith abrog abrogates a lot of the Quran. It yeah. abrogated muta, it abrogated alcohol, yeah. because Muhammad forbid yeah, alcohol. And, and, and not only that, bro, Quran. what about the river of wine in Jannah? Like Kenosis is saying. Yeah. The what, river of wine is, in Jannah. Why is, are Muslims so hypocrites? It's, it's right after the verse of the big rested virgins in the Quran. The Muslims say, oh, the big rested virgins are not in the Quran, you know. Yeah, it's virgins, raisins, right? It's raisins. <laughs> No, it's virgins. <laughs> what, so you're telling me there's such a thing as big-breasted raisins? Yeah, big-breasted raisins. Yeah. Show someone is asking to show him Surah. Okay, just a sec. Surah five. I hope. And then, Hadith. Uh, sorry, Ayah number ninety. Let's see what Ayah number ninety is saying. Yeah, we believe strong thing and games of chance and idols and divining hours are only an infamy of Satan's handiwork. But wait a second, this is a contradiction. We just found a contradiction, right? Here, in, alcoholic drink is from Allah, but here, suddenly it's from Satan. Nice contradiction in the Quran. Are you telling me we just found a contradiction, uh, bro? 
Can we conclude that this is a contradiction? Yeah. Why? Well, uh, why here it's saying strong thing and games of chance and idols are deriving errors are only an infamy of Satan's handiwork. Then here it's saying alcoholic drinks are from Allah. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -huh. it, this is this is such a bad contradiction because what one verse is saying it's from Allah, one verse is saying it's from Satan. Yeah. So who is it from? Unless you can yeah. bring the collusion that yeah, who, there is, is no from? Who is it contradiction from? and Satan is Allah. Yeah. Who, who is it from? Is it from Allah or is it from Satan? Or, or is Allah Satan? So, uh, Ab uh, some Abdul is calling me, I think. I will hang up on him. Okay, bro? Right. Okay. Right. Let's see. Let's see this up. Okay. Hello? Hello? Um, hi. Hello, hi. Welcome. <clears throat> What's up, my friend? What do you have something to say? Um, okay, so I just want to mention uh, about the contradiction that you mentioned. Um, yeah. One verse, I think, basically, the one that's talking about Satan is referring to the Akhirah. No, sorry, um, no, not the Akhirah, the uh, Dunya. What? Repeat, please. So, like, you know, when. God says in the Quran, strong drink and games of chance are Satan's handiwork. Yeah, so? I'm, pre I'm pretty sure it's referring to the dunya. What the, dunya, what dunya? Like as in, in, the, in, the, in this world. Yeah, in this world, yeah. Strong drink and games like this are haram for you. Yeah, but here it says like it's from Allah. Like are date palms from grapes, is it here in this dunya? Yeah, what I'm saying, like Surah Al-Nahl. Uh, verse 67 when it's referring about the fruits and the dates uh the wine there it's from jannah where did where does it say that where does it say that where does it say jannah why are you now adding my friend i mean the people i mean what from what i've heard is is talking about wine in jannah where does it say wine in jannah where does it say that please show me show me the word jannah here in this area here the, the, i mean everyone is watching right guys give me one if you're seeing the screen in the chat everyone is watching with us i mean where is the word jenna here why are you adding my friend i mean come on i i you sound like a very sincere guy and i really respect that you know i love someone who is very respectful you sound like a very good guy maybe a good family and you sound very respectful not not that guy who called me earlier calling himself ultimate shirk you know but yeah. you you are trying to tell us everyone that this is from jenna where does it say jenna my friend can you show me the word jenna here I, last time I checked, we have da date palms here on Earth. We have grapes. I mean, I, 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 if I open my refrigerator right, right now, I have grapes. Mm. And if I, if I put grapes right now, right today, you know, if I would live in a very warm country, I put grapes and dates, uh, let's say, in a jar. Right, I put water in it and I mix it with water. If I leave it for a cup, let's say maybe 24 hours, if it's very hot environment, it will become fermented. It will become intoxicated. So it will become surely a strong drink. It will become wine, right? Yeah. So we showed you, my friend, we showed you if you were watching. I mean, I'm now live for how long? For a very long time right now. I think for at least mm. uh, two hours, I think. I'm not sure. So, yeah, one, one hour and 49 minutes. We showed everyone that Nabid... I, can you see the screen, my friend? Can you see the screen? Um, if, you, you, if, you, if you open YouTube, my YouTube channel, if you go to the live show, and you can see, it says the Nabid, which is wine, that Omar ibn al-Khattab used to drink oh, um, and turned sorry, into vinegar. I forgot to um, mention that um, I'm not actually um, a Sunni, I'm Shia. So. Oh, you're, you're Shia. Okay, so you, yeah, yeah. you curse, you're, you, you don't like Omar, right? I don't like Omar, but I don't... Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. What about Muhammad? Do you like Muhammad? Mm, the Prophet yeah. of Allah? Do you like yeah. him? Do you think he's the yeah. best of example? Mm, yeah. Okay. Here, the proof is in front. This is Sahih Muslim, Hadith number 2005b. It says, 
Aisha from the mother of, uh, of the believers. Oh. From even the book is called the book of drinks. We prepared Nabit, which is wine. Everybody, if, do you speak Arabic? Uh, okay. No, you don't. Okay, you don't know Arabic. So it says we prepared Nabit. So Aisha is saying we prepared Nabit for Allah's messenger, who is Muhammad, her husband, okay. in a water skin, the upper part of which has tied, and it, the water skin, had a hole, and its lower part. We prepared the Nabit, the wine, right? The mixed drink, like I said, a mix. Nabit is basically a water, water mixed with dates or grapes. So. Aisha and some other ladies, maybe her servants, they prepared Nabit for Muhammad in the morning and then he drank it in the evening and we prepared Nabit in the night and he would drink it in the morning. Right? And if you ask any, yeah. any Arabic speaking person from the Middle East, what is Nabit? I mean, he will not hesitate to tell you that Nabit means wine. And if we go back, uh, let's say this, this hadith is, is fake, yeah, because you are Shia. But look what the hadith is saying. The Nabi that Umar bin al-Khattab used to drink had turned vinegar. Now, every vinegar. person... No, every, every person... Oh, please mute YouTube. Oh, please. I'm hearing myself. YouTube, mute YouTube, my friend. So every... If I buy a bottle of wine now and I leave it open for, let's say, a week or leave it for two weeks, even unopened in the fridge after I drink from a little bit I close it and put it in the fridge after a couple of weeks it will turn into vinegar everyone knows that so the mm. proof is that the Sahaba and Muhammad they used to drink wine but we showed everyone from this diagram that I created you can see that when Muhammad became a prophet in the year 610 when he was 40 he received his so-called first revelation. Mm -hmm. In those whole period, until the last three years, when he died in 632, in the last three years, let's say from 629 to 632, he started to forbid alcohol. Why? Because he was, Shia will say, he was, uh, you know, you're Shia, you will say that he was poisoned by Hafza and Aisha by the command of Abu Bakr to take the power from Muhammad, right? They gave him mm -hmm. some medicine. You know the story, right? You can't say it's not yeah, true. Right? So they gave him some kind of medicine or poison and he, they poisoned Muhammad so that Abu Bakr can take the command from Muhammad, all right? Okay. Sunni will say, no, Muhammad became very ill. He got poisoned at Khaybar by a Jewish lady. Three years, yeah. Yeah. So, in the last three years, as you see here in front of you on the screen, in the last three years, Muhammad started to forbid alcoholic drinks. Now, why is that? Because he, he, the, he and here's the reason why, Muhammad became so ill, so sick from the, either it's the poison from Aisha and Hafza, as the Shia say, or what the Sunni say, the majority Sunni Islamic world say, no, no, a Jewish woman poisoned Muhammad. So he became so sick and so jealous from the people who kept drinking and we showed even a hadith saying that Muslims used to go drunk in a drunken state for prayers and Muhammad didn't like that, right? To be drunk and pray. So he became really jealous because he could not drink anymore. So he started to forbid in the last three years before his death, he started to forbid alcohol. Isn't this fish? Be honest, my friend. You sound like a very respectful, very... Isn't it fishy that Muhammad all that time, he, he used to drink, his Sahaba used to drink, people used to go drink, Muslim used to go drink, drink, you know, you to, see, to, uh, to the mosque. Um, I, d I, don't, I don't doubt that um, Omar ibn al-Khattab drank because like when he was dying and from the wounds of Abu Lulu, he drank wine and the wine passed through the wound. So I don't doubt that Omar uh, and the other Muslims drank wine. Um, what? 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 Can you, can you repeat? Of, can you repeat, my friend? So, I'm not really um, doubtful about the Sahaba drinking because when Omar ibn al-Khattab was killed by Abu yeah, and um, the wounds, he drank wine and the wine passed through the wound. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, can uh, you, can you see here also, my friend? In uh, This is chapter 4 from the Quran, right? 
You can say mm. this is f fake hadith. Or, yeah. Oh, you believe. Mm. So here Allah is saying to the Muslims, Oh, you believe, Muslims, draw not near unto prayer when you are drunken. That's clear language, right? So don't mm -hmm. pray, don't go to the masjid or don't go pray if you are intoxicated, if you are drunken, right? Mm -hmm. So why Muslims say, why Muslims say, you know, why are they trying to tell us, you know, alcohol is no good, it's from Satan. Well, the Sahaba, the best generation, the first generation of Muslims, they used to drink more alcohol than you and me altogether. Do you drink alcohol, mm. my friend? Do you drink alcohol? Uh, no, no. No. So what's the problem if this first generation of Muslims used to drink alcohol? Why should you not drink? I mean, again, um, I think that it's bad in this world because, you know, we have a soul and um, the soul will experience um, harms and like um, stuff from it that isn't really good, like hangovers and stuff like that. Yeah, drink yeah so my much. friend, my friend, even Christianity teaches you know, you should know your limit. I mean, if I drink a little bit, there's nothing wrong with with uh, drinking a little bit of wine. But you need to know your limitation. There's nothing wrong. Look what what the Bible, even the Bible says, right? It's not what defiles you that goes inside your body, but what comes out of my mind. I mean, if I drink one glass of wine every day, but I'm I'm I am really humble. I don't insult Muslims. I don't insult Christians. I am trying to be live a very perfect life isn't it well if but imagine if you are the opposite you are really a very foul person right you use bad language but you are not drinking alcohol you don't eat anything that is haram but you have really bad heart you steal you kill you are a very bad guy you insult people what's the what's better huh be honest my friend is it what comes inside your body that devours you or that what comes out of your heart and mouth as the Bible teaches um, again I mean when it comes to that like uh, if you drink alcohol but you don't do anything bad it's uh, it's sort of good and bad like obviously Islam well, obviously we believe that you shouldn't drink yeah but if okay, you're still doing why, good things why, then, you know, why my friend thing. Why, my friend? The Sahaba used to drink. Muhammad himself used to drink. I know. I don't doubt that uh, the Sahaba used to drink. No, no, However, Muhammad. I do doubt that hadith not only the Sahaba, the Muhammad. Muhammad himself used to drink. I kind of doubt the hadith because Aisha narrated it. And Aisha has narrated some pretty dodgy uh -huh. stuff. Okay. Okay, I see. But my friend, my friend, my friend. Muhammad himself drink. Mm. You know that, right? I mean, according to Aisha. but Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. Isn't Aisha one of the mothers of uh, Islam, Muslims? She's, she's narrated some pretty dodgy stuff. I see, I see. Okay, well, my friend, why do you think why do you think Muhammad is a prophet? Forget about that. Why do you think Muhammad is a is a prophet? What's what's your proof that Muhammad is a prophet? What's your proof that Islam is really the truth? Um, the evidence is that. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was yeah. a prophet. It's seen through the um, the prophet's family, the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, like the way they act, um, their ilm, their like knowledge and stuff like that. Yeah. The way they act towards the Christians and the yeah. like. You know when it says the hadith push them against the edge of the road. I don't really believe in the hadith because Imam Ali alayhi salam. I remember those hadith. Okay. Um, when I was watching a lecture by Sayyid Ahmad Nakshwani, may Allah bless his, uh, may Allah lengthen his life, mm -hmm. and um. You know, it's a hadith where Imam Ali -Islam, was walking with a Jew okay. uh, to his home, right? So they were walking home together and they were having a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and the Jew said, when, oh, sorry, I have to go for like one second. Okay. Oh, that's wonderful, man. Wonderful story. I mean, come on. That, that's, that's for sure proof for me that Muhammad is a, is a prophet. Let's see if he comes back. I'm really convinced from that story, to be honest, guys. I mean, now I'm so convinced I want to say the Shahada. Uh, uh, are you back? Uh, okay, my friend, I, you said a lot, but to be honest, I'm still, you still didn't convince me how Muhammad is a true prophet. 
Sorry, but I'm, good. I'm I just mean... going to have to leave. I'll call you back. Oh, okay, okay. Alright, See bye. you, bye-bye. I Ooh. mean, we have a lot of good people on this earth, man. Does that mean everyone is not a prophet? I mean... Uh, this guy sounds really like a really respectful guy, and I think... He comes from a really respectful and good family. That means he is a prophet. This guy who just called me is a prophet too. I mean, what? What is the proof? My question is really clear, sound and clear, crystal clear. Why is Muhammad a true prophet? Prove to me that Muhammad is a true prophet. What's your evidence? What's your proof that Muhammad had any eyewitnesses? Did anyone saw Muhammad? Talking with Jibril. Did someone see Jibril? Did anyone see Jibril? No. But they saw that Muhammad was becoming like a crazy person for at least six months. That's proof. Muhammad was walking like a crazy madman, like a majnoon. You know, majnoon in Arabic means madman, a crazy person, possessed by jinn. He was possessed by the black magic, by Satan himself. And he acted like a crazy person, seeing things that are not there. If you ask any psychologist, if you ask any psychologist, what what can you say about such person? You'll say this guy is uh, is no good in the head. He needs medication. He needs to be uh, get some help. Right. He was bewitched, yes, by black magic. And if we ask, where does black magic come from? They say uh, Satan is the master of black magic in Islam. It's really evil. Yeah, he's schizophrenia. He's suffering from schizophrenia, right? Schizophrenia. Arabic people will say schizophrenia. That's how they call schiz uh, schizophrenic. Schizophrenia. He's suffering from sh being in, under schizophrenia. The bewitched prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, why didn't Allah question Muslims? If we have Muslims listening. Question. Why didn't Allah protect Muhammad from the black magic of Satan? Why did Allah allow Muhammad, uh, Satan to control Muhammad for such a long period? Here's the proof, guys. I'm not... Saying this from myself, this is from the hadith. Black magic from Aisha. This is from Sahih al Bukhari, hadith number 57, hadith number 57, 65. Aisha, lovely baby bride of Muhammad, in Sahih al Bukhari, saying, Magic was work on Muhammad, Allah's messenger. Allah's in the meanwhile while still praying on Muhammad. We don't know why. But Allah is still praying. So that he used to think that he had sexual relations with his wives. Well, he actually had not. So Muhammad was like a madman. Walking crazy like a madman. Thank you for the donations, guys. We appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you very much. So is this the proof that Muhammad is a true prophet? And why didn't Allah protect Muhammad from the black magic of Satan? Allah allowing his best of example, the final prophet, the leaders, the leader of the all the prophets, the seal of all the prophets, to be, be possessed by the black magic of Satan? Uh oh, Muslims. Uh oh. Yeah, maybe he forget. Yeah, he forgot to eat seven ajwas. According to hadith, guys, let me show you. According to Muhammad, from the mouth of Muhammad, if you eat seven ajwa, if you eat seven ajwa, Sahih al Bukhari, if you eat seven ajwa. Look, Sahih al Bukhari, Sahih, 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 always with an echo so that Muslims. Know that it's Sahih. Hadith number 57, Hadith number 57, 79. Narrated Sa'ad, I heard Allah's Messenger Muhammad saying, Whoever takes seven ajwa, which means seven dates, in the morning 
will not be affected by magic or poison on that day. Question Muslims. Did Muhammad forget to eat seven ajwa when he was forget to eat seven ajwa when he was poisoned in Khaybar? Or as the Shia say, did he forget to eat seven ajwa before Aisha and Hafza poisoning him? Or as the Sunnis say, poisoned by the poison from the Jewish lady that Muhammad butchered her family. And did he also forget to eat seven ajwa when the Jew cast a spell on him? Huh? Hmm? When Labid bin al Asim, a man from the Bani Zuraiq, who was an ally of the Jews. So he was an ally of the Jews who cast a spell on Muhammad. Did Muhammad forget to eat his seven ajwa that morning? Huh? Any Muslim? Think Muhammad forgot. He used to forget things, guys. Fishy. This is fishy, man. The ajwa. Seven ajwa. Muhammad. I think Muhammad only ate five ajwas. He didn't eat six or seven ajwas or more than seven ajwas. He only ate six. He was not very hungry that morning. Yeah, only six, barely, yeah. You know, you need, you make sure to always eat at least seven. Maybe the ajwas were, ma maybe he ate seven, but they were very small, you know. It was really a bad year for the ajwas, and they really didn't grow very big, you know. So the, the amount of ajwa was not enough for the poison, and you know, who knows. Oh man, uh oh, uh huh, uh huh. Oh, Muhammad forgot about his own advice that day. I hope the young man, that respectful guy who just called, that he will call me. You know, we are for a long time now on this live show. Are you bored, guys? Should we wrap it up? Are you bored? Or do you like today's live show? What do you think? No? Yeah, another spank plan. Now, you know, Seri, to be honest with you, my friend, I'm not doing this to spank Muslims. I'm doing this for the truth. You know, when you are a respectful Muslim, like this young girl, he, he seems like a very young kid. When you are respectful, I'm going to respect you back, right? But when you're go have, uh, going to have a really bad mouth, all right, like the Bible said, all right, it's not what comes inside your body that defiles, but what comes outside of your body, your bad language, your bad behavior. If you are respectful, I'm going to respect you back. Even if you're a Muslim, even if you're a Hindu, if, whatever you are, right? What about Surah 590? Uh, what about it, my friend? Let's see. 90. Yeah, this is, this is a nice contradiction. Like we mentioned earlier, right? We mentioned this. Here it says it's from Satan. And here it's from Allah. It's a nice contradiction. So here it says that the date, palms, and grapes did arrive in intoxicants. It's a good thing. It's from Allah. Good things come from Allah, right? But here it says it's from Satan. So is it from Satan? Is it bad or is it good from Allah? Uh oh. Aha, uh -huh, Muslims, we found a contradiction. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh oh. Any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Do we have an Ustaz who has the courage and the knowledge to call me? <clears throat> uh, MC Scott is saying, what is the reference that Aish Avza poisoned him? Where did Shia got from? Um, um, MC, I'm not sure how to, sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, Shia, like the Sunni, they have their own hadith. So in their own hadith, 
If you go, go, ask Prophet Google, peace be upon him, you will see that when you type Shia, I think there are many Shia websites, you can find where it says that Hafsa and Aisha poisoned Muhammad. So Shia believe that Hafsa and Aisha poisoned Muhammad so that Abu Bakr, it's what, it was an inside job, so the, the, their own most closest friend and family, they turned against him. Allah didn't protect him from them. I mean, you're the last and final prophet of God, right? Why didn't Allah protect you from your own people who want to get rid of you? Right? I miss you too, guys. God bless you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I've been, I've been sick, guys. I had some personal issues to deal with. So I was away for a couple of uh, weeks. But you know, that's life. And you know, we're back. I'm still not really recovered. You know, maybe you can hear it from my voice. I have a cold. But that doesn't hold me back from doing the Lord's work. Lord's work. Glory to His name. So, do we have any Muslim? You know, guys, maybe for the people who just joined in, today we mentioned and we started to talk about the topic that Muslims are forbidden to copy the Jews and the Christians. We played a video about the Shema of the Jews. You know, they quote what Deuteronomy 6.4 is saying. Hear, O Israel, Shema, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And here, this is also talking about the Trinity, right? God, God, God is one. So, Muhammad stole this from the Jews. Right? He stole this from the Jews. And he kept stealing from the Jews. And we showed you also that from the book of Genesis, how Muhammad stole the copy paste, where it says that God created Adam in his own image and we can find it also in the Islamic most trusted sources. So Muhammad was nothing but a copy paste from Jews and Christians. Right? Muslims being hypocrite. Right? Oh, someone called me and immediately hang up. Call me back, my friend. Call me back. Not sure who that was. <clears throat> and we showed you some contradictions and we showed you that the Sahaba used to drink, Omar ibn al-Khattab used to drink wine, Muhammad himself used to drink wine. So why should you as a Muslim not drink wine? Why? But we proved to you when Muhammad became very sick in the last three years, he started to forbid alcohol because he became very jealous of his own Sahaba who were really good alcoholic drink consumers. So, you know, even the Quran said, Drink, it's okay, but don't go drunk in a drunken state to the masjid, right? And we also showed you how Allah is asking for blasphemy from the angels to worship Adam. Because prostration, sujood, right? Is judu, sujood, fasajadu, right? Illa iblis, only iblis did not commit shirk. So Allah is asking for shirk from the angels. But the good guy here is Satan himself refusing to commit shirk, to commit blasphemy, to, to worship Adam. So who is the good guy? Satan is and Allah is the bad guy. Right? Question Muslims. Why is Allah want to punish Satan while well, Satan is not an angel, he does not feel addressed, because it says, when we said unto the angels, right? Lil malaika, right? To the angels, worship, do an act of worship to Adam. They worshipped Adam, they bowed down and prostrated to Adam, except Iblis. Well, Iblis is not an angel in Islam, guys. In Christianity, we believe that Satan is a fallen angel. He was an angel. He became a fallen angel when he went against God. But in Islam, that's not the same thing. 
in Islam, angel, uh, Satan is not an angel. He's created from fire, smokeless fire. But angels are created from nur, from light. Right? So it's a different kind of creature, different kind of being. So here we have two problems. Allah is commanding the angels. Satan is not an angel. So why is Allah punishing Satan? Well, he, Satan is not an angel. Point number one. Point number two. Why is Allah asking as God, so-called God, we don't believe he's God, right? He's a fake God. But why is Allah asking the, the angels to commit shirk, do blasphemy act, worship Adam? I mean, you are Allah. Why are you asking your servants, your angels to worship Adam? That doesn't make sense, right? Any Muslim. Yeah, what is the use to prostrate to Adam? You tell me, Siri. I mean, you're Allah, and you're asking your servants, your angels, to worship Adam? That doesn't make sense. That's blasphemy, man. That's blasphemy. Allah knows better. Allahu Alam. Yeah, you're worshipping creation. You're asking your angels to worship your creation? Oh, oh, aha. Uh -huh. Silly act of a creator. Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's my problem with this ayah. And that should also be the problem of the Muslims with this ayah. This is clear proof that for every Muslim, for every Christian, clear proof, clear evidence that Muhammad exposed himself here by fabricating an ayah. And now we can use this man-made ayah, man-made Quran against Muhammad, showing everybody that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, Adam Akbar. <laughs> yeah. Muslims, please, for the love of God, we are now for more over two hours showing everybody with clear evidence. We went to the Quran, we went to the Bible, we went to the Hadith to show you that Muhammad cannot be a prophet. He is nothing but a hypocrite, fake prophet, making ayahs, fabricating ayahs, while at the same time getting busted. Please, if you care about your own salvation, drop Islam, leave Islam, come back to Jesus Christ. It's my duty to invite you to Christ. If Muhammad is a fake prophet and he lied about Jesus, saying that Jesus is not the Son of God, that means, and we prove to you that Muhammad is a fake prophet, that means still the Bible is intact. Nothing wrong with the Bible, nothing wrong with Christianity, because if we can prove to you that Muhammad, and we prove to you that Muhammad is a fake prophet, that means Christianity is the truth. Right? I mean, many, many fake prophets. We have many fake prophets. We have Joseph Smith, right, who is the prophet of the Mormons. Many fake prophets came after Jesus and tried to invent and fabricate things against Jesus Christ. I mean, that, you know, it's the work of the devil. What can we do? That's humanity, right? But as we today prove to you that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet, I invite you back home. I invite you back to your Lord and Savior. Please accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because nobody can save you except Jesus Christ. Glory to his name. And as you see, your leaders, your ustads, your imams are hiding. They don't dare to call me. Why? Ask yourself why. We have more than 150 people watching. Are you telling me no Muslim has the courage and the knowledge to call me? To refute me? Please come back to Jesus. Right? And it's not what comes inside your body that defiles you. That's what you eat. But what comes out of your heart, out of your mouth, by their fruit, you will know them. What comes out of a man, that is what defiles him. Not what goes inside his mouth. Not what you eat defiles you. But your words, your act of behavior, your acts, your behavior. Right? What is more beautiful teaching than this? Than the Bible. The teaching of Jesus Christ. Right? Please come back to Jesus. Glory to his name. Guys, thank you for watching today. I think we had a, uh, a nice time together. Um, 
Oh, MT Peng is asking a question. Chapter 9. Before I go, I really want to answer that question. No problem. Let's see. Chapter 9. I have 30. Yes, I have 9 30. Let's see what that I say. Well, yeah, this is a lie. This is a lie, guys. Thank you. This is a lie in the Quran. Mr. M. M. Peng. M. T. Peng. This ayah is nothing but a lie, a big scam. And why is that? Here's why. Pay attention, guys. I'm going to tell you why. Please take notes. Chapter 9, Surah at Tawbah, is one, maybe the last chapter of the Quran. If you ask a Muslim, they will say it's one of the last, maybe the last chapter of the Quran. You know? So, it's saying, and the Jews say, so the, uh, uh, the Al Yahud, right? Al Yahud, they say, the Jews say, Uzair, there's nothing called Ezra, this is a false translation, guys. Uzair, I'm not sure who Uzair is. Anyway, the Jews say Uzair is the son of Allah. So here, Muhammad is lying. He, he created this ayah. He fabricated this ayah. Lying about the Jews. Because no Jew ever said that Ezra. Or there's nothing called Ezra. Sorry. That Uzair is the son of Allah. First of all. There's nothing called Uzair in the whole history of the Jews. And Jews don't worship Allah. Two problems. Right. So we found two problems. There's nothing called Uzair. And Jews don't worship Allah. And then it's kept, it keeps lying about the Christians now. And the Christians say, the Messiah is the Son of Allah. First of all, the Aramaic-speaking Christians, before Muhammad created Islam, they have never heard of Allah. So the, the Christians never said the Messiah is the Son of Allah. They say the Messiah is the Son of the Father in heaven, right? So there's nothing called Allah in the time of the Christians. There's nothing called Allah in the time of the Jews. And there's nothing called Uzair. It's, it's not Ezra. Let's see if we go to another translation, guys. Maybe we find another translator who is not a scumbag lying about the name Hosea. Because, you know, when you go to the translation, they try to fix, to deceive. Here again, another lie. See? Ahmed Ali, false translator. Filthy, disgusting liar. Let's see what... What about... Uh, Maududi. You know, a lot of people like, Maududi. a lot of Muslims like Maududi. If we go to Al Maududi, what does Maududi translate? Let's see if he's going to be a scumbag too. Aha! Uh Aha! -huh. Uh -huh. Look, look, look. Al Maududi in his translation, this is translation of Al Maududi. The Jews say, you see? Uzair. So he, you know, he's lying, but at the same time, he's putting the right name. You see that? So it's Uzair, nothing called Ezra. Aha! Uh -huh. So, Muslims, I give you a thousand dollars. I give you a thousand dollars if you can show me one Jew who said that Uzair is the son of Allah. I'll give you a thousand dollars if you can show me one Jew in the whole history of Jews who said that Uzair is the son of Allah. We, don't, we never heard of the name of Uzair before Muhammad. No Jew have heard the name Uzair before Muhammad. So who is Uzair? Why is Muhammad lying about the Jews? Why is Muhammad lying about the Christians? Uh oh, we just exposed Islam again. We just showed you that Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. So please come back to Jesus. Because Muhammad is nothing but a filthy liar and a scam, a filthy lying, fake prophet. Uh -huh. You see how they, those translators of today, guys, try to fix the dilemmas, the disasters that Muhammad fabricated in the Quran. They try to mislead you, deceive you in the translation. So imagine, guys, if you are not an Arab like me, if you are not an Arabic speaker like me, you are being deceived. Look, let me go to the most used translation of, in the world for the Quran, which is 
the Sahih International, right? They call it, it's written by three women, guys. You know what Muhammad say about women, right? But anyway, it's the most used. Three women from America translated this Quran, uh, the Quran, and this is their translation, right? This is Sahih International, written by three women, Muslim women. And you know what Muhammad say about women, right? They are brain deficient, they are stupid. So the Jews say, you see how they are lying? Those three women, and this is the most used translation in English for the Quran. But the Arabic does not say Ezra, it says Uzair. Who is Uzair? We have heard of Ezra, but you are fixing it in the translation. That's not what the original Arabic says. Shame on you Muslims for lying about your own Quran trying to deceive the non-Arabic speaking world. So if you are an Indonesian Muslim, please leave Islam. Because the proof is in front of you. They are lying to you. Wake up, man. Please. Hey, Phil Herrera, how are you, my friend? Welcome. Yeah, we didn't have any admin. And I think you maybe uh, the admins don't know yet that I'm back. Like I said, I've been gone for a couple of weeks. I had to fix some personal things in my life. I've been sick also, so please pray for me. Pray for me so that we are healthy. Please pray that we can keep doing what we are doing to show everybody the real truth about Islam. That Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet and that the Muslims of today have to fix the disasters of Muhammad in the Quran, in their translation. There's nothing called Ezra, okay? So by this, I hope I answered your question, Mr. M.T. Peng. God bless you. Hey, longiness of Jerusalem, God bless you too, my friend. Guys, please also pray for our lovely admins who are doing an amazing job. Pray for all the warriors who are doing the Lord's work, you know? Maybe not everyone can do what we do. Maybe not everyone can do what Christian Prince does. But, you know, you know, the Arabic language, guys, I'm from the Middle East. I'm an Arabic speaker Christian, right? Arabic language was forced on us, on our families, right? It's not our language. The original language is Aramaic. We still speak the, the Aramaic language, right? Right? But Arabic was forced on us, right? Allah, the name Allah was forced on us. It was never our God, right? So we rather use the word Al-Rab. Al-Rab means the Lord, our Lord. So when I want to pray in Arabic, I never use the word Allah. I say, Ya Rabbi, Ya Ilahi, my God, my Lord. Ya Ilahi, my God, Ya Rabbi, not Allah. Allah is not our God. So please keep supporting our warriors, support and download our videos, support Christian Prince, watch our videos, download our videos. You know, YouTube needs some time, especially since we are more than two hours live now. YouTube needs some time to process the video. So take your time. It may take maybe more than 30 minutes to, for the video to be processed, uh, processed by YouTube. Download them, take the parts that you like out and upload them because you know many people don't know about the real face of Islam and by doing that you are helping those people a lot of people still don't know they don't know about the lies of Islam well Xeltra Muhammad stole a lot of things from the Jews from the Sabians Ramadan is a Sabian practice. Muhammad himself was a Sabian, right? Wait, let me try to tell you what I want to go at. <sighs> then we can wrap this up. <clears throat> if we go to the Quran, let's see. Mm, I think it's, yeah, I think I know where it is. If we go to chapter, let's say, uh, 2, and I think 60. 
9, if I'm not mistaken. This is the biggest chapter. Chapter of the cow. Anyone knows why it's called chapter of the cow, guys? Anyone in the chat? Why is it called the chapter of the cow? Yeah. You know why? Because... The reason why is because... A guy was... <clears throat> struck down a dead guy he was struck down with part of the cow and he became alive again he got resurrected again to point fingers as the to, to the guy who killed him so that's why it's called al baqarah the cow yeah so muhammad was telling nice jokes in the biggest chapter of the quran mm, what i uh, was i looking maybe in another ch chapter 5 let's see here this is chapter 5 guys <clears throat> to answer your question this is chapter 5, ayah 69. It says, Indeed, those who have believed, you know, the Arabic, again, this is false translation. Let me switch. You know, liars, man, when they translate the Quran. Filthy, scumbag liars. They always need to add their own words to the Quran of Allah. You know, Allah is not specific enough, so they need to fix his own Quran in the translation. Muslims have no shame when they translate, but they, you know, that's how Muslims are. So, lo, those who believe, and those who are Jews, and Sabians, and Christians. Did you catch it? Question, Muslims. Sabians, Muhammad was a Sabian. Alright? Muhammad, before becoming a Muslim, he was a Sabian. Sabians used to worship stars. Comets. Right? Planets. They were star worshippers. So how, question, Muslims, to you Muslims, how are the Jews, okay, we understand the Jews believe in one God, the Christians believe in one God, but how are the star worshippers believers? Can you tell me? Here, Muhammad was trying to become friends with his fellow Sabians, to take them into Islam, to invite them to Islam. So he's saying, oh, you know what? You Sabians, you are believers. You see the problem here, Muslims, that Muhammad created? Muhammad, when he fabricated the Quran, show me one chapter that has no disasters. I challenge any Muslim to show me one chapter that has no disasters in it. Any chapter that you pick out, it contains disasters that Muhammad made for you when he fabricated those ayahs. So how did the Sabians, who are star worshippers, how are they believers, according to Muhammad? Please tell me. Explain to me. I don't. Maybe I'm. I'm. I'm ignorant. Any Muslim? Welcome to uh, Renfer. Welcome, my friend. God bless you. Missed you too. Any Muslim who can explain this disaster to me? How are the Sabians guys who are star worshippers, who are basically pagans? How did they became believers according to this ayah? I mean, come on. We have over one hundred people watching and no one has the courage and the knowledge to call me on Skype. I mean, my Skype is open. Call me, refute me. Please explain to me how Muhammad called Sabians believers. Uh-huh. We found a disaster. Again, what else is new? Star worshippers are believers? Anyway. Guys, I think uh, it was a good day. You know, like I said, I'm still sick. I really miss this. You know, I thank the Lord that I can keep continuing doing this. We need to do this, guys. We need to help the Muslims out, right? I'm not doing this for myself, guys. 
We're doing this to help the Muslim, to show the Muslims that Muhammad is nothing for the, but a fake prophet. But at the same time, I'm inviting you back to Jesus Christ. Because if Muhammad is a liar who came 600 years to lie about Jesus, lie about Christianity, that means Islam is fake and Christianity must be the truth, right? Because Muhammad came to lie about Jesus. He came to lie about the Bible, right? When he fabricated the Quran. So please come back home. Come back home. Jesus loves you too. Thank you, Phil. God bless you, my friend. Guys, play, please pray for our health. Please pray that for us so we can keep continue doing this important work. Support our work. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button and also click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live or upload videos download our videos my videos are your videos guys i'm maybe for some people it's hard to download and upload a complete long video but if you like some parts and you want to use that to help people to show the real face of islam not the one the the, the lies and deception like these false translators especially like say international and all kind of deceivers who lie in their translations Add stuff that is not there in the Arabic, right? To deceive the non-Arabic speaking world. Thank you, my friend. Jesus says, God bless you. God bless everyone who joined in. Thank you. God bless you and your families. Stay healthy too. Don't forget to keep us in your prayers. Thank you for your donations and thank you for your support. God bless everybody. And hopefully we will see each other very soon again Jesus is Lord and Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet a liar and a deceiver Islam is false please come back to Jesus Christ accept him as your Lord and Savior because you can't help yourself only a divine creator like Jesus can help you you can't help yourself we are too weak we are not worthy enough to help ourselves we can't do anything we are nothing without God. We are nothing without our Creator. Glory to His name, Jesus Christ. He is the eternal Word. When God spoke, it was the Word creating. Through the Word, everything is created. Through the Word that became flesh, Jesus Christ. Please come back home. Thank you for watching and see you.